Uh, what motivated us to uh, carry out the, the research along with colleagues from Mexico and Spain uh, was to really inquire about uh, the extent to which forests that are managed by local people are better conserved in terms of forest cover vis-a-vis uh, -vis protected forest areas. And we knew from isolated studies that in some cases that was true. In some regions, community managed forests fare as equal or sometimes better in terms of maintaining forest cover than adjacent protected areas. So basically what we wanted to see if there was a broad pattern across the tropics that could support our hypothesis that in fact was the case. So we carried out an extensive uh, survey of peer review literature, which means papers that are found in scientific journals that have been subjected to external review that fulfill a set of uh, criteria in order to really say something about deforestation rates over time in two broad major uh, land use types, which are again forest protected areas or parks and forests that are managed for goods and services by local people. We, we see these as part of an overall conservation strategy. Parks obviously are good in conserving biodiversity. However, our main recommendation in the paper is that we should not be looking only at these type of land use, that other types of forest uh, use can be also as good as parks in protecting forest cover. If you look at it from an absolute standpoint, there's probably more area under forest protected areas than under community managed forests. But again, it's part of an overall package of conservation. You need the parks because parks are conserving specific aspects of biodiversity and ecosystem services. And you also need people to make use of the forest. And with the right mix of attributes, the, in terms of tenure of rights, uh, economic outputs and other variables, you can have also a very effective conservation strategy. So we should be looking at these in terms of an overall conservation strategy. And what the paper does release, it adds further evidence to the fact that locally managed forests can be good for the environment, also for local livelihoods. They have cultural ties and they have traditional knowledge that they have been applying for centuries, if not millennia. And there is a designation that comes from the government. There's, there's a layer that superimposes this traditional knowledge with more regulatory aspects and the overall mix is conducive to a conservation strategy that maintains the forest. So there are many variables, there are economic variables, the type of product they're managing, there has, has to be some sort of economic uh, return to them. Uh, they have to feel secure that they're not going to have issues of illegality or that their land is going to be taken. So in those, that mix of variables works good in some circumstances and in others. But the overall idea is that uh, local ownership and benefits that accrue directly to the people who live in the forest, it's probably an essential part of, of the equation. Let me go back a, a bit and say that there were good examples and there were bad examples. Our paper, again, it provides evidence of a broad pattern, but there are exceptions. We provide an average value of deforestation in community managed forests and an average value of deforestation in protected areas. And we find that the average value of deforestation in community managed forests is less. In other words, over time, they tend to remain forest. But we found in our selection of cases, community managed forests that were not doing very well. So you have to be careful when you, when you read an average. I mean, it's, it's the sum of many variables. In other words, there were success stories and there were not very successful stories. Uh, from a geographical standpoint, uh, one area that provided a few good examples was uh, the Yucatan Peninsula and the Maya Forest in Central America, uh, which uh, has been locally managed for many years. And again, there's a lot of local ownership and there's a lot of, uh, there has been a lot of government interventions to really make uh, the system work in terms of uh, economic return and, and, and livelihood. So I would say that from our geographical standpoint, uh, the neotropics, the American tropics, uh, stands out with the highest number of successful cases. Our sample did not include as many cases from Africa or Asia, but again, we looked at peer review literature and we just sampled what was out in scientific journals. So we may have missed uh, successful cases, but again, that was our sampling universe.
we still need them, of course. Uh, that, that's, that's clear. Uh, there are uh, attributes that protected areas provide that you don't necessarily find in a community managed forest because you know there's product extraction there might be a little bit of over harvesting and there are there might be species that do not occur in a locally managed forest so uh, again each each land use type it's part of an overall package so what we should be looking at it's to really try to diversify the best strategies in terms of overall conservation of forest biodiversity but parks are essential and parks again are located in areas in which probably uh, the production of a certain good is not feasible we think that the implications are important because if the red scheme comes into a reality in the near future these forests can qualify for uh, for carbon credits in terms of retaining carbon through sustainable management in other words you're allowing the people to use the forest you're retaining the carbon in the big trees and at the same time you're providing livelihood benefits it's an important finding for the red uh, deliberations in order that policy metrics do not really uh, forget that you know this type of, of land use is it's important in maintaining forest cover which is the ultimate objective of red